Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to you for At Home with Quest. I'm Patria King, and it's a pleasure for me to be here with you each evening at half past seven, just as a way of coming together and touching in uh, with each other, and also to talk about some of the things that people are finding challenging at the moment and how we can manage ourselves through that process. I imagine that many of you have come to Quest over the years because you hit some major challenge in your life, maybe a, a grief, a tragedy, a diagnosis, you know, we call them the Ds, the, the things that kind of stop us in our tracks and um, a D could be a drama, a disappointment, a disaster, a diagnosis, a death, a divorce, a disfigurement, a disability, a dementia, a dad, a daughter. There are all kinds of Ds. And when we bump into that D, it stops us in our tracks. Now we've got the D of disease stopping us in our tracks. And given we've been stopped in our tracks, we're also confronted with all of the habitual ways that we run away from ourselves. You know, the busyness that we keep ourselves involved in, um, the distractions of what we watch, what we listen to, where we go, what we do. All those things that distract us from just being with ourselves. And of course, when you bump into one of those Ds in life and everything that's second nature to you doesn't work, it might be second nature to drown your sorrows, drug yourself, fill up your life with too much busyness, retail therapy, uh, irritability. It might be whatever is second nature to you just not working. And you get to that fabulous place where you realise that I refuse to be defined by whatever's happened to me. I know I can be more than this, one of Wendy's favourite sayings that's echoed throughout her life. I know I can be more than this, more than whatever it is that's consuming us. And whether that's our grief or our anxiety or our rage and frustration, our anger, Whatever it is, there's no looking away from it. And so in just reflecting on what, what is it that nourishes the part of us that can hold all of that without losing our capacity to love? And when we meditate and we practice witnessing sensations, thoughts, feelings, sounds, when we think about the mansion of emotion and our ability to witness ourselves having the feeling, giving ourselves permission to have it, and then witnessing how that feels in the body and then bringing some kindness to that. So whatever techniques they might be, all of them are to help us get into right relationship with ourselves, that we're not that busy, busy story that we tell ourselves all the time. We're not just the grief story we tell ourselves. We're not just the sad story, the depressed story, the enraged story that we tell ourselves all the time. We're so much more than that. And it's at these moments when we're confronted with a mighty D and there is no escape down our usual avenues, going to the pub, playing around a golf, getting it out in sport, going to the beach, you know, all of the ways that you may have distracted yourself aren't available. And we're confronted with ourselves. And yet we know we have that kind of understanding already that there's a part of us that's larger than just what we're experiencing at this present time, whether that's a, a tragedy, a trauma, isolation, no escape. 
And the escape, of course, is finding rest in that which can watch the drama and participate in a loving, kind and compassionate way to the drama, but doesn't get caught up in the drama. And that's the pathway that really every spiritual tradition has ever spoken about, that return to that which is essential in us, that heaven is within us. It's the story of the Bodhisattva, the journey back home to our essential nature, rather than the chaos of what has become, for very good reasons, second nature to us. And we've talked about that in other evenings, that we take on from our earliest time, the I'll be happy when story. We're enculturated into our particular family and adopt patterns that work for us within that dynamic. We take on the prejudices that the family had and that there's the us and there's them. And we've taken on getting our whole body up and working and then we set off and that all that becomes second nature to us and it works until it doesn't. And actually the moment when it doesn't has such profound potential for awakening to the larger part of ourselves that can witness it all and not be buffeted by it. And that's the path for all of us, sometime. And now it seems like the perfect time, given that we're here together, we're on this journey, not quite sure where it's going, but we're making a deep commitment to not getting overly caught up in the drama. There are going to be times, of course, but then that comes in that practice, the mansion of emotion. This is how it feels to be Patria, feeling sad, feeling grief, feeling confused. The second step, give yourself permission. It's okay to welcome this into myself. It's not who I am. Even in the first step of labelling it, you're already more than it because you can capture it in words and label it. So that reinforces and uses your neocortex, takes you away from your primitive brain. So if you utilise these practices, this is how it feels to be Patria, feeling confused, feeling grief, feeling sad. It's okay to welcome this experience because I know it's not who I am. It is what I am feeling. So be mindful of what you attach I am to. Rather than I am sick, I am tired, I'm sad, I'm grief stricken, I feel all kinds of things. But I know they're not who I am. They are what I am feeling. And we may not want to speak from that feeling or act from that feeling. And mastery is our ability to witness ourselves having the feeling, but still being in a position to respond, not react from the feeling. And that third step of this is how it feels to be Patria, feeling whatever the feeling is. And maybe you can locate where that is in your body. It usually is in your body, maybe in your belly, maybe in your jaw, the throat, maybe a tightness in your heart. And if you just allow that, yes, this is how it feels, that third step, this is how it feels for me to be in the presence of this. And oftentimes that fourth step of I need, how am I going to nurture this part of myself that's feeling rage, that's feeling sad, that's feeling alone, that's feeling whatever, so that we embrace it rather than resist it or judge it. And that is the spiritual life, the life where we stay awakened to what is 
without going endlessly into the future that hasn't happened or into the past that's over. That's where the peace that passes all understanding resides, right there in this moment. And when the brain is quiet and in your service and not running the show, then you're able to have that ability to bring some compassion and kindness to our wayward thoughts and feelings when they arise, instead of being sucked in by them and letting them take us on a journey to who knows where. So the spiritual life, you know, for me, all of this work is spiritual work because it's about the return journey back home to that which is essential in us, which is the age-old journey that's written about in every spiritual tradition. Now there's great neuroscience and epigenetics and lots of ways for us to engage in this understanding and to use it so that we liberate ourselves from everything that's become second nature to us and live and experience life from our first nature. That which was there before we took on all of the conditioning and the, the wounds and the traumas and the tragedies. And, and from that place of deep peace, we can hold the trauma, we can hold the tragedy, we can hold the grief, we can hold the loss and not be consumed by it. So that's why we do these practices, constantly coming to our senses, because your body's always here in the present moment. Nip that wayward thinking, nip it in the bud, come back to the moment. What are your hands doing? What's your body engaged in? What's it feeling, listening, tasting, smelling? Stop. And enjoy that rest of the quiet within yourself. And gradually, it's like building a muscle. Because each time you do that, you remove your attention from your primitive brain, you re-engage your neocortex, where all of your higher functioning lies. That's what you need right now. That higher functioning right now. So, let's take a moment or two to settle into a posture that feels balanced and comfortable for you. That might be lying down or sitting. And if you're sitting, then sit with your body balanced, your spine comfortably erect. But before you do that, you might like to have a really good stretch, lengthening and stretching out all the fibres, and then gently settling your body into a posture where rest can come. If you're sitting, you want to have your spine comfortably erect, your feet flat on the floor. If you just need the deep relaxation with the intention of going to sleep, for our New Zealand friends and others, then please feel free at the end of the practice just to roll over and go to sleep. If you come back at the end of the practice, you weren't asleep. If you've chosen to go to sleep, you will stay there. If you come back at the end of the practice, even though you might think you were asleep, you might even have sounded like you were asleep. If you came back at the end of the practice, you weren't asleep. You were in that very deep state of relaxation, which right now might be the most beneficial thing that you can do for your body. So remember, always um, trust your own practice. You're always in charge of your own practice. You can open your eyes, cough, scratch, snore, do whatever you need to do, sneeze. You can change your posture if you need to. 
But endeavor to sit in a posture where your body can remain without moving for a little while. So, if you're going to close your eyes, you might like to close them tightly, open them wide, and let them close over lightly. Or you can leave your gaze just softly downward. And just take your awareness into your body just as it is right now. Notice any areas of tightness or restlessness. Or is there a deep peace and spaciousness in your body? Perhaps there's discomfort. Notice it and let it be. And be aware of your posture, the shape of your body, and aware of what's supporting your body. And let it fully support you. Let your body rest. You might like to deepen the breath by breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth like a long sigh. You might even like to make a sound with the outward breath, the sound of just letting go. And with each outward breath, breathe out all the busyness of today, any conversations, thoughts, upsets, all the busyness, all the fluctuating thoughts and feelings from the day. Breathe out all the labels that you hold about yourself. whether as a good person, not so. Just breathe out all of those beliefs about yourself, about others, as you give this time to yourself. The breath full and deep right down into your belly. Each outward breath, letting everything go. And let your breathing return to its own natural rhythm. You might like to rest your hand on your belly just to ensure that it continues to gently rise and fall so the breath stays full and deep the way a baby breathes the abdomen gently rising falling with each breath and bring your awareness now to your feet feeling all the sensations within your feet. Take your awareness to the soles of your feet. Notice where there's pressure, space, aware of textures, temperature. Then to your toes, beginning with the big toes. 
You can wriggle them a little to locate them fully in your awareness. The bottoms of the toes, the tops, the sides, your second toes and so on. <clears throat> down to your little toes. Then take your awareness to the tops of your feet. Notice pressure and space, temperature, textures. And feel the sense of aliveness within your feet. Life in your feet. Permeating every cell of your feet. And breathe in a sense of gratitude for that life. Let it flow down with each outward breath to fill your feet, a sense of gratitude for life. Your ankles relax, and that sense of relaxation flowing up into the calves, each of the muscle fibers softening. Letting go. And even when you think they're relaxed, let them go a little more. And breathing in that gratitude and letting it flow down to fill your calves down into your feet, into your thighs as the muscles soften and spread. Aware of the touch of your clothing against the skin of your legs. All the sensations within your legs, the sensations of life. Breathe in gratitude and let it flow down to fill your legs with each outward breath. Your buttocks relax. Your lower back. You might need to tilt your pelvis just a little to find the right alignment for your spine. The muscles of your abdomen gently rising, falling, at your own rhythm. And breathing in that sense of gratitude, let it flow down to fill your abdomen, to flow deep within your pelvis. The seat of your immunity, your health and well-being, bathed in a sense of gratitude for life. Let that flow softly into your solar plexus and tummy, the gentle presence of relaxation and feeling appreciated as you breathe in gratitude and send it down into your solar plexus and tummy, softening, embracing, dissolving, leaving only gratitude. And let it fill your chest, Your heart, your lungs bathed in the peace that comes with gratitude. Made whole and strong 
and healthy, feeling appreciated. Breathe gratitude into every part of your lungs, your heart. Let it soften and open in compassion in response. A soft opening of compassion. Let go any tension in your shoulders. If you're sitting, you might like to shrug them two or three times by bringing them right up next to your ears and letting them go. Or you can do some gentle head rolls if you have a lot of tension in your shoulders. And feel the relaxation flowing down and across your back. Flowing over your shoulder blades, behind your shoulder blades are letting go, your waist, your lower back, relaxation like a wave of gratitude that flows down across your back down through your spine, breathing gratitude into all of the nerves that travel out through your body. Flowing down through your arms into the elbows, the forearms. A soft presence of relaxation flowing into your wrists and hands, flowing down through your fingers, right down into the fingertips. Your arms at rest. Breathe in gratitude for all that your arms provide for you. Let it flow down as a wave of gratitude with each outward breath. Your throat open and relaxed. As you breathe in gratitude, let it be a blessing to your throat to the food that you swallow, to the words that you speak. For every breath you take, a wave of gratitude that encircles your throat as all unnecessary tension drains out of your neck. Your lower jaw relax so that your teeth part just a little. Your tongue at rest in your mouth. Imagine the insides of your cheeks Relaxing the outsides, all the little muscles round your eyes smoothing out. And deep behind your eyes, a sense of letting go, your eyes floating in two dark pools 
of peace. Imagine the relaxation spreading into your forehead as your eyebrows widen. Your temples, your ears, every hair on your head. Relax. At ease. And breathing in a wave of gratitude. Let it flood the outside of your head. Over your skin, your scalp, your ears, your jaw. Then breathe it in to fill the inside of your head. A wave of gratitude that floods your brain. It shines in your eyes. It fills your nostrils, your ears, your mouth. A wave of gratitude. For all these senses. That allow you to. Soak in life. There's nothing you need to do now. But rest, your body deeply at rest, your brain coming to rest when thoughts, when feelings, when stories, they're just neuronal pathways starting up in your brain. And just send a wave of gratitude to let them be without resistance but without indulging. Just a wave of gratitude for thoughts that come and go, feelings that come and go, sensations that come and go. Rest in the stillness. Millions of people right now are resting in the stillness. Points of light. You can keep your awareness focused on the breath. the rising and falling of your belly, the movement of the muscles, your clothing against your skin as you breathe. Or right at the tip of your nostrils where the air enters, leaves your body where life enters and leaves your body.
You may prefer to repeat a word or a phrase silently in your mind. With each inward and outward breath, perhaps something like all is well or be calm. Or some other words of your own choosing. Or you can simply count the breath. Ten on the inward, ten on the outward, down to zero. Or you can simply rest. In this gracious state of being. If the mind becomes distracted, gently bring it back to the practice. The sensations of the breath or the repetition of the word or phrase of your choice. You simply rest in the stillness. Now as you rest in this quiet space within yourself, imagine the interconnectedness, the web of light that flows around the globe. For all those resting, in stillness, in prayer, in meditation, and all of that light surrounds the planet, this interconnected web of light.
and <clears throat> embraces the planet. <clears throat> that heals and strengthens the planet. And let the grateful breath enliven the light that flows throughout that network. connected with all those on the journey home to themselves. To the wise, deep part of yourself. And gently bring your awareness back to your physical body, its posture, its shape. And take a few grateful breaths into your body. Grateful for all that it provides for you. your immune system strengthen, your heart, your lungs, all the microbes that live within and on us, appreciated for the work they do. And allow your breath to be fully down into your abdomen as you deepen. Feeling refreshed and energized and relaxed. Knowing that you can return to this quiet within yourself whenever you choose. Your awareness returning to your arms and legs. Then begin moving your hands and feet. Then let yourself stretch. Enjoying the refreshment throughout your body. And gently bringing your eyes to open again. You might want to rest them a little longer or roll over and go to sleep. So, these practices, if we use them on a regular basis, they change our life in such profound and positive ways. And as you know, on the Patria King meditation page, there's a whole year's worth of practices there. And you're always welcome to come back and utilise these practices at a later time or share them with friends that may be having a difficult time uh, managing their anxiety or their depression. Some of these talks may be of benefit to them. So if you'd like to share it, please feel free. Um, I'll be here tomorrow evening at half past seven. 
Can I suggest that you really draw richly on all of the tools that we've talked about over these past weeks? You know, slowing things down, maybe halving the pace, all these techniques, hand on the belly, being aware of the breath, counting to the inward, holding, exhaling for the count. All these techniques that we've talked about are all practical tools and skills and strategies that you can utilise to rest in that quiet all of the time. Not just some of the time when you sit to do a practice, but that it overflows into every moment of your day. So that whatever you're attending to, you're present to that. And if you do that throughout the day, you'll find that you're as fresh at the end of the day as you were at the start. It's when we carry the stress and tension from one activity into the next, into the next, into the next, that we end up forgetting ourselves and reacting from what's second nature to us. And right now that's so easy to do, isn't it? Because everyone's feeling a little agitated. So the greatest gift you can give yourself, your loved ones, your community, is the gift of your own good physical, mental, emotional and spiritual well-being. These practices are all about how to take good care of yourself. And tomorrow night, just for a change, why don't we talk a little bit, little bit about food and looking after our bodies physically uh, at this time. We're going into winter uh, when all the citrus come in. So there may be a message in understanding some things about food. So tomorrow night we'll do a little bit of a, a talk about food and how we can nourish ourselves. Um, I was a bit disappointed to hear our chief medical officer say, stay home and eat chocolate. Uh, stay home and nourish yourself really well at this time so that your body can take very good care of you. So we'll talk a little bit about that tomorrow evening. I wish you a really good night's sleep, a restful night, and I look forward to being with you tomorrow evening. Good night.